Hello and welcome to a brand new series on how to detox. This is the very first video and we are covering how to detox your physical space. Before we begin, I need to mention that this book that inspired this whole video, I've mentioned it so many times in the past, but it has truly changed my life. It is The Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. She has her own Netflix series now where she goes into people's homes and helps to tidy up their lives. I actually read this book years back and I made a whole video on me going step by step through the process, but this video is just an updated version and I've learned so much about myself and the process of tidying up since then. The very first tip is to tidy by category and not by location. For example, start off by tidying up your clothes instead of just your closet because you might have clothes in baskets in another room or downstairs or in your car. So before you begin, maybe sit down and write a list of the different categories that you're trying to organize. For me, these were my categories. Clothes, books, kimono, which are miscellaneous items. The items in my bathroom were categorized into beauty and skincare and last but not least and this should be all saved for last is your sentimental items some of these categories will take longer than others but just be patient and know that it will be so worth it in the end I'm so excited talking about this actually because I really do hope that this video can change your lifestyle as well okay so once you have each category you'll need to follow these steps I started off with clothing which is where most people start off because everyone has clothes. Step number one is to gather everything in a pile. So I took all the clothes off the hanger, out of the drawers, and dumped everything into one massive mountain on my bed. There's a huge mental science to why you do this because if you just stand and sort through the clothes on the rack, it's much easier to leave it where it is versus taking everything off. It's completely empty and it's almost like you're shopping again for new clothes and it's like you're deciding, okay, would I buy this now if I saw this in the store? Step number two, once you have this big pile, is to take each item, hold it in your hand, like literally touch and feel the item and you have to ask yourself, does this spark joy? So it has to be like this instant decision-making process, which in the beginning, you may have to kind of develop those muscles of discernment, but by the end of this whole process, you will become a pro at deciding really quickly, does this spark joy? Ching! It does, it makes me really excited when I look at it and feel it and I wanna wear it right now. When I wear it, I'm gonna have a good day. If not, you're gonna have to let it go. So that's step three. After you hold the item and ask yourself if it sparks joy, you have to decide whether to keep or discard the item. This is much easier than it sounds, especially if you have some sentimental attachment to the item. In the KonMari method, she talks about either keeping or discarding an item. So in order for the decision process to go faster, I actually cheated a little bit and added a maybe pile. So I would hold the item, and if it was an absolute yes, I'd put it on the keep pile, and if it was an absolute no, I would move it to the discard pile. But sometimes, if I had to kind of sit on it for like five seconds or longer, whatever the reasoning was for wanting to keep the item, I would just move it to the maybe pile and go through that pile again later. I did this with all of my clothes. I decided to either keep, discard, or maybe I'll decide later. So once I did all that, I went back to my maybe pile and it helps really to not only hold the item, but wear the item and see how you feel with it. Are you vibing with it or is it just like a nah? And honestly, most of the items in my maybe pile, I ended up discarding. And even as I was putting the clothes in the keep pile back on the rack, I ended up letting go some of those as well. So whether you put it in the keep or discard pile, it's not the end of the world. Don't think too hard about it. Just have an instant intuition of whether you're vibing with it or not. For all the items that you decide to discard, the rule of the KonMari method is to actually thank the item for the time that you had with it. It may sound a little weird, but it does help to let go of that attachment. And step number four, which is kind of optional, I guess, would be to clean 
the items. So for me, I actually laundried everything that I was going to donate first, and then I laundried everything that I was gonna keep, and I had like a trunk sale where I just gave away clothes to my friends, and then I just donated everything else. And after you clean the items, step five would be to designate a home for each item. And it's really important how you decide to store your items because a lot of us have developed bad habits with doing so and this is what causes mess to happen again in the future. I'm not gonna get too much into detail on how to fold your clothes using the KonMari method. I am still learning to do that myself. For right now, I roll most of my clothes and I just ordered some dresser organizers from Amazon. And after tidying through all of my clothing, I ended up downsizing my closet in half. I was able to get rid of entire dresser full of clothes out of my closet and I'm actually using that as storage space in my office room. But how crazy is that I was able to get rid of that much clothes. The next category that I went through was books. And again, I did the same thing. Step one, gather everything into one pile. Step two, ask myself if it sparked joy. And step three, decided whether to keep, discard, or maybe. And then I decided to store it in its proper space. And as far as books go, I actually have a goal for this year to not buy any more new books because there are already a stack of books that I want to read that I never had the time to read and I don't know why I keep buying new books. I will only limit myself to the audible credits that I have but otherwise no new books for this year. Same thing with my kimono items and my Funkos. I took every single Funko box out of my closet. As a collector, I don't really plan on getting rid of any of them. I just basically took everything out so I could see it in front of me and then I organized them into its different categories and then put them all back. After putting everything back, it looked exactly the same as before. I knew in my head that it was all organized and forcing myself to see all the Funkos that I own, it was an important thing for me to do because it helped me to realize that when I buy Funkos in the future, I really only want to buy the ones that truly spark joy when I see it because some of the Funkos that I bought I kind of do regret I did buy some off of impulse other items in my kimono included random stuff that I shoved underneath my bed random stuff up on the closet in the desk section I just had these random places where I stashed kimono I had to kind of gather it all into one place a lot of them were sentimental so I put it aside so that I could deal with it later so the next category for me was the bathroom and all of the beauty and skincare products. I saved up a lot of products that I thought I would use someday. For example, I kept a big bucket of bleach because I thought I would bleach my hair one day. I had a ton of like blue hair dye, purple hair dye, and I decided, okay, I don't think I'll ever use it. I was just holding on to it because I thought someday I might need it. And the very, very last category that I had to go through, which took the absolute longest, and it was the most mentally draining process, was my sentimental items. This category was the toughest for me to go through personally because I realized that I I am such a sentimental sucker and I hoard a lot of things. If you ever get that question, like if your house was burning down, if you could only keep one item, you know, what would you want to keep? For me, it was never material things. It was always my sentimental stuff. Like I am so attached to my sentimental shiz and I don't know why. It made me really question, like if I had to let go of all of my sentimental stuff, all these little random knickknacks that have no real value, would I be able to just say goodbye to them? Or am I that attached to my past and these like little nostalgic precious things? And forcing myself to let go of a lot of things in this category helped me out a lot to know that I don't have to be attached to these things. I still have my memories. I'm still who I am and how I was shaped to be with 
without like a candy wrapper that I had in sixth grade. With that being said, I still kept a ton of shiz, but I let go of like half of it. So I still have a lot in order for me to be content, but now I don't have boxes and boxes of things that I won't even have the energy to go through because it's just too much. Maybe someday I'll narrow it down even more, but right now I'm so content with the amount that I have. Most of my sentimental items were stored in my garage, way up on the top shelf where I will never reach for, and I decided to take those down. I also had some stuff in my treasure chest, in my closet, random boxes in my fridge. I was able to organize it a lot better because a lot of it was just like scrambled into one box and it didn't make much sense. Not everyone's like me. You may have like absolutely no sentimental attachment to things, but for me, moving on in the future, I just want to better organize my sentimental belongings and actually make art of it. I'm actually creating a life art journal, which I will talk about more in the future, but it's a way of gathering all these things and scrapbooking it into one place instead of ending up with boxes of random sentimental crap that I don't know what to do with. A couple other categories I forgot were craft supplies, my tech gear, stuff in my car, oh my goodness. So once I had everything sorted and stored into its designated home, it was time for me to clean the entire space. I sweep the floors, vacuumed, wiped the surfaces, I washed my bed sheets, finally started putting things in place. And the very, very final step once everything is clean is to decorate. My approach to interior decorating is quite different than what it used to be. Right now I'm focusing on decorating with most functional items I'm trying to keep it very minimal and adding on from there but I don't want to have decor just for decor sake for example I used to force myself to buy frames just to have frames as decoration but now I just want the process to be a little bit more organic if I'm out and I see an art piece that I really like then I'll buy it in the moment and then hang it up so right now I have pretty much a blank canvas that's okay. I'm actually really appreciating the clean open space for now and I realize that I am not ready for house plants and that is also okay. Last year I bought a ton of house plants. All gone. All gone. Yeah, all gone. I was able to let go of the attachment I had to the past. A lot of items, even in random categories like books I read or old makeup, it was hard for me to let go because I had attachment to them and because it reminded me of the past. Some of them really sparked joy and I just knew I had to keep it, but others, it was more like, okay, I need to thank it and let it go. Another plus is that it helped me to appreciate my possessions in the present moment, knowing that I probably don't need any more than I have now. And what I do need isn't much in reality. So even though I got rid of like half my closet, I wasn't even paying attention to all those clothes anyway. I wouldn't even wear any of those in the next week or so. So I don't know why I even held on to them so hard. And the last plus is that it taught me to be a better buyer. When I'm purchasing something, I became extra picky on deciding, okay, is this something that will eventually end up in a discard pile within the next year? And I discovered what I really want. And what I want is actually less and not much more than I already have. That is it for this video. I hope it inspired you to tidy up your own space and get ready for the next four videos in the series on how to detox. I love you guys so much. Bye-bye. It's a disaster, but I, I don't care. I mean, I care, but it's not even real to me. It's like my life isn't even real to me. So kind.